Hey guys, this is the Tunator, and today we're something, doing something a bit different. Welcome to episode 1 of the Skyrim Mod Showcase. Now, I'm doing Skyrim instead of uh, New Vegas today for two reasons. Number one, a lot of people have been asking for it, or three reasons, actually. Number two, there's a whole lot of cool mods out there for it. Number three, New Vegas Nexus is down, so I can't get uh, some of the new uh, New Vegas Nexus uh New Vegas mods I wanted, since so putting God mods I can run because I'm carrying too much stuff, because it's my my oversight, but anyways, a bunch of cool Skyrim mods for you today, uh, nothing really too earth-shattering, mostly a lot of graphical improvements and, uh, stuff like that, but they really make the game look and play a whole hell of a lot better. So the first one is the, uh, the, uh, Enhanced, uh, Night mod, or Enhanced Night Sky mod, I may have gotten the name slightly incorrect, but uh, the correct name and link will be in the description. And as you can see here, it just makes the night sky, you know, truly incredible. Right now it's a little bright, uh, because of, simply due to the fact that it's about 5 a.m. in Skyrim, but, uh, we will hopefully get a chance to see it dark again later. I, in fact, I plan on it, and, uh, you can see it just has really rich, deep star field, you know, some of the crazy nebulas that I believe Morrowind and, uh, had, I'm not sure if Oblivion did. And, uh, it just generally looks awesome. Uh, again, I'll show you one, uh, later night or later at night, later in the video, and it looks phenomenal. This is definitely one that, it may not sound like something you really need, especially considering the night sky already looks pretty good in Skyrim, but once you get this, believe me, it's absolutely gorgeous, so immersive, uh, you will not want to go back. I don't know what that little dark pole thing is. I saw that earlier. It's a little worrying. But anyways, uh, yep, now I'll get to uh, Lydia and what I'm carrying in a second. I have a whole bunch of mods active right now, so. The next thing I want to show you is the uh, uh, a quality map mod. What this does is it just kind of overhauls the whole game map. There's a whole bunch of different variants. I'm just going to show you uh, right now. First, uh, we're going to do the uh, kind of the just the the high quality uh, roads version. So you can see here, uh, it's the same map, but it's it's a bit higher quality if you look at the areas. And more importantly, it uh, it adds on all of the roads. So one of the big pains with the uh, the normal Skyrim map is that. It's really fun trying to just plan a route around if you don't fast travel, like I, I don't fast, or if you're just trying to go somewhere where you don't have a marker, like I don't fast travel sometimes just to run around for fun. Uh, one of my uh, friends who's an avid Elder Scrolls fan, you know who you are, has set me onto that, so uh, it's actually a lot of fun, I definitely recommend it, but you can see all the roads, so you can just plan accordingly, like say, uh, I'm on Windhelm right now, if I want to, you know, figure out, oh, how do I get to uh, Riften all the way down here. You can see it has all the major roads and minor roads. You can have a version that's just the minor roads. And there's one other really cool version uh, that I'm going to show, uh, which I'll do at the end of the video, probably. I'll just show this for now, because I don't want to spend too long just looking at the map. But uh, there's, you can also get a version without the clouds. I left the clouds in, because I think, personally, they're very cool. But if you don't want them obscuring, you can get the non-clouded version, which I will probably also show at the end. And the quests kind of bank up around the, uh, the mountains here. That's another very cool mod. Uh, it's the map overhaul, which the game can use, because the, the normal map's fine, but it uh, could be a lot better. So, as most aspects of the game could be, which is why we have mods. So, uh, the next mod I want to show is the uh, One Helm uh, Sexified. And no, this does not add, you know, dancing you know, strippers everywhere, as you might think uh, by the name. It's actually kind of a, a high-resolution texture overhaul for One Helm. Did I just go the wrong way? I think I just went the wrong way. That's my bad. But anyways, uh, yep, sorry. I haven't played this game in a bit, so I'm a little lost. What it kind of does is just, it makes a Windhelm higher resolution, uh, more saturated. Uh, you can see even just the, the stones look uh, better, but the most notable thing will be, you see the roofs are a little more lit. But again, the most notable thing I'll be able to show you is when we get into the main hall. Uh, there's a whole bunch of there's a bunch of different versions of these by the same guy, and they're all really quite cool. But uh, I'm gonna also going to show you uh, White Run and the Town version later. The main hall is where the most distinctive changes are. So just in general, it kind of it makes the, the towns look more vibrant, a uh, bit more of a high fantasy feel, as you can see here. Instead of kind of depressing and bleak. Uh, it's all colorful, you know, very colorful, very high fantasy, almost kind of a World of Warcraft color tones, almost, in terms of everything's very bright and saturated and pop, which is very different from the normal aesthetic of the game, and not something everyone may be looking for. Again, it's just really rich, really colorful. But personally, I think it's a it's a very nice uh, change. It's an example of 
how well a very small aesthetic change can just kind of, not a very small, but, but just kind of a minor aesthetic change can just create a really, really different atmosphere for the entire uh, entire game. And this is a far, far cry from the bleak, depressing place where it normally is. It looks really awesome. So major props to the, uh, the mod creator for doing this stuff because it's really quite cool. So we'll go into the barracks to see what that looks like. Again, this is for White Run of the small towns. I believe he's just working on overhauling a whole bunch of different areas to kind of bring this consistent uh, theme of you know, vibrant colors, more of a high fantasy feel, and it's really pretty fantastic. As I think you guys will agree, even if you don't want to or wouldn't want to use this yourself, I think we we can all recognize that it really is a very very interesting overhaul to the game. It at least sets a completely different tone, and I think a, a very good one. Yep, I had to wipe out the Dark Brotherhood. <laughs> Oh, the random stuff guards will say to you. That's fun. Alright, so the next mod... Actually, no, I don't want to do that one until I get to... Uh, uh, one helm, actually. No, one helm, uh, right run. So we're going to go to... White run? For the next few ones I want to show you guys. I could show you guys here, but... It's easier to do, that, easier to do it there. And again, you see uh, just how the, the stones are a bit more high texture. The roofs have more color. Roofs? How do you pronounce that? I always forget. They're kind of orangey, and the whites are more vibrant. Everything just feels, uh, you know, a bit more high fantasy, a bit more cheerful, a bit more colorful. So, if you think the normal Skyrim environments are you know, kind of bleak or depressing, this may be a mod for you. I am actually, I'm a fan of the normal ones, but I'm also a really big fan of this mod, just because it's, it's very, very cool. But, uh... Yeah, it's just a re really interesting change. It's something I think we can all really appreciate. Uh, so, oop, that, whoops, that's my bad. On to uh, White Run. Well, I suppose I can do it out of here. And uh, as I'm sure someone will probably ask, no, I did not watch the Super Bowl. Not a huge football fan, although I don't have anything against it. But, uh, yeah, know some people who did. Giants won, I guess. Yay. Go Giants. <laughs> Again, not really a huge football person, so... Nothing against it, but not a huge fan. It's really the only quote-unquote sport that I even remotely follow would be StarCraft. <laughs> Which uh, is actually quite interesting. If you don't watch it, I highly recommend it. You need to play the game. You don't even need to play the game to uh, really have fun watching it. And it, it can be really quite cool. It's a great game. So, The first mod I'm going to show you in here is the... Uh, Sexified White Run, which is much the same idea as the Windhelm thing, except for White Run, and it's really noticeable here. You see, everything has kind of these uh, vibrant. Uh, I keep thinking of Reckless Zoom, I can follow. What is Zoom? I forget. Oh, that's a shout. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, everything has these kind of very bright red roofs, you know, blue walls. Uh, see, the, the wall won't happen again. <laughs> There's more where that came from. Yeah, there's a. You know, very higher texture rocks. The, the walls are higher texture. And it, this white run in particular, I think, is really affected by this. And really, really looks what like you uh, you know, you, you're, what you might kind of expect out of a more you know standard kind of high fantasy, colorful, magical setting. Which again, uh, not that it, it looks like World of Warcraft, but I think it shares uh, this, these mods share a bit of a World of Warcraft sensibilities in terms of color, which can be quite a good thing. Is World of Warcraft is a very distinctive aesthetic style. And while I don't always like the, the proportions and stuff on it in regards to uh, the, just the the general design of you know armor, weapons, characters, things like that, what, the colors are quite well done. And when you combine the colors with uh, a more real, yeah, realistic architectural style, I think you get some really cool results, as seen here. And the whole mod just aims to create, uh, in the various areas you've done it for, uh, just more saturated, vibrant colors. So we'll go up here. Got the companion saw, which is also, you know, a bit more colorful, I believe. Uh, pretty much everything in the game is. And then out of the game in the area. And then we'll go look at the Jarl's Palace. And then, uh, there's a few more I have in this area, and I think then there's just... We'll go to uh, look at, after we're done in White Room, we're going to go look at Riverwood, because there's another one of the sexified mods. That overhauls, you know, the, the, your basic small towns and stuff like that, and makes them look awesome. So you can see, look at the side here. It's just again very colorful. And yeah, I think this is a really fantastic mod. This one I'm definitely going to keep installed for a uh, white run at least. Uh, one helm I might 
leave the press because I, I really like the wind helm. But white run, I think, looks absolutely phenomenal this way. So. Let's take a look at the inside of the Jarl's Palace. If it loads... Oh, and uh, I should have talked about this already, but this is not intended necessarily to be a weekly feature. I'll do these every now and again, especially if I find something cool. Uh, but the primary focus will most likely still remain on Fallout, because that's kind of where my uh, heart lies. And, uh, and the idea, the schedule I'm trying to get, which I've pretty much been on this week, is a mod video on Sunday, whether it be for New Vegas, Fallout 3, Skyrim, whatever, and then Let's Play videos or just gameplay videos the Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And uh, so I think what I may adjust that to is in terms of when you guys should check uh, what's going on is I... what. A day for me, I tend to view it kind of the, the early morning of the next day, so it's the same day, which is what, um, at least a lot of my videos kind of going up late, so probably what a more realistic schedule would, would be is mod video Monday, then uh, gameplay videos Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and just upload it early, very early in the morning, like, you know, 2 or 3 a.m. or just late at night on the previous day, so generally you're going to want to check uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I'll keep you guys updated, and I mean, you'll notice if anything changes there, but... Anyways, on to the stuff you actually care about. Uh, just the, the colors here again, you can see very, very colorful, very cheerful, very high fantasy. Uh, all the kind of grim aesthetic, uh, or bleaker aesthetic is, is gone. I'm just replaced with very fantastical colors, which again, uh, if it, even if it may not be your thing, it, it's really quite eye-popping. Uh, really spectacular, the wood, particularly just like the wood panel. And so this is definitely something you should at least give a shot and see if you like it. If you don't, it's fine, but if you do, uh, you're in for a real treat, because uh, these are just some really phenomenal aesthetic overhauls. Some of the coolest ones I've seen, it combines the, just the, the general visual improvement of a texture pack with a really interesting recoloring. So, and that's something, oh, like uh, what he said here, something that wouldn't really be possible in a game like Fallout, so it's interesting to see how the two kind of trans, uh, the two, you know, settings, mod, how our mods uh, approach them differently is because you couldn't really recover stuff to make it ch more cheerful in Fallout. I worry about so it'd look weird. You could try and actually remodel stuff to look more modern, but then that would defeat the point of the setting. So it's really, a, really interesting how you can do stuff in Skyrim that you can't do in Fallout and vice versa. Again, it's looking at some really cool houses. So uh, the next one I should talk about is probably Lydia's armor, because a lot of you are wondering what that is. I'm sure a lot of you probably already recognize what it is, but uh, what her mod, her armor is the uh, armor of a character uh, character called Triss from The Witcher 2. I have actually not played The Witcher 2. I really should at some point hear very good things, but I just saw this armor. I thought it was very cool, and I figured a lot of you guys have probably played The Witcher 2 since it's another very big fantasy RPG that was released this year, so I figured I would download it, give it a look, and it really it ended up being quite a fantastic armor, so if you play The Witcher, you'll probably enjoy this. If you don't play The Witcher, you'll probably still enjoy it, because it's really cool. But uh, we'll do a free camera, so uh, we can just kind of look around a bit. Oh, let me do it when I'm not looking at Lydia, so we can... What? Oh, well, some of these bitter. But yeah, you can see just... Uh, I believe this is the default outfit of her from the game. Uh, again, I haven't played it. But you can see just the, uh, the general stuff, like little mana vials or potion vials. Uh, and it comes in three segments. Every segment has a boots part, a jerkin, and then the arms. So we'll go back to normal. And there's actually, like, I think eight different, there's eight different overall styles. And you can mix and match pieces from all the styles. So it actually ends up uh, having, I think they said something like a thousand different permutations of the armor you could have. So there's I can show you here. Things done. I like that. Uh, these are all the different versions you can make. There's eight different overall colors, and they all have uh, a studded version, a non-studded version, uh, and then uh, uh, I think shirtless, which is removes some part of the uh, the outfit. I'm not sure which one exactly, but yeah. So there's just a whole bunch of different ones you can kind of mix and match, create a whole bunch of different colors, and it's uh, really quite cool. So we'll go look at the uh, all the different colors of each one. And yeah, just had a very cool armor overall. Got some so, uh, what should I show? oh yeah, next uh, I'll show that there's a, the mods, obviously, 
Uh, these would be out already, but they're uh, that add kind of some of the notable Lord of the Rings swords, specifically Andril, Narsil, and Glamdring, which are the, the sword of Aragorn, uh, the sword of uh, Elendil, and then Isildur, and then the sword of uh, Gandalf, respectively. I forget who owns Glamdring initially. I think it's some elven guy, uh, from, maybe from like the Silmarillion or something, I forget. But anyways, these are just really cool looking swords. Uh, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you also like them because you're a Lord of the Rings fan. But uh, they're pretty cool in general. This, I believe, is Glamdring uh, right here. Show you the whole thing, and then we'll show it uh, attacking it. Let me get it in the sun. This is the uh, quote unquote ancient version. There's like three different versions of each. Uh, you can buy them from Eorlund at the Companions Forge, or you can craft them. I was only able to craft the ancient version because I didn't have a silver ingot, but you can craft you know, more polished and shinier versions as well. But I actually really like the look of the ancient version, kind of the, the battle scarred look there. So, yeah, that's Glam Drink. And they all come in one handed or two handed versions. I was only able to craft the one handed version for Glam Drink, but. The other ones I have two versions for. And yeah, so you can see it's just got the, all the normal animations. Basically just a very cool sword. And we'll go look at the, uh, the items, which leads me into the next mod, uh, quite organically. A uh, Sky UI, which is an, a UI overhaul for the game to make it more PC friendly, which in my opinion it desperately needed. And this is actually pretty amazing. Like, I'm, I'm kind of in love with this. It, it really it kind of restructures the whole UI. You have favorites, all weapons, armor, potions, scrolls, you know, just all the different categories. Uh, you know, very, it's very intuitive. It displays all the information for everything right away, you know, right out there for you to use. It just looks better and feels better than the kind of little thin sidebar thing, which is, uh, was not a fan of that. Uh, and yeah, it's just overall a fantastic UI overhaul. This does need the Skyrim script extender, which I will link in the description. Install the same way as the New Vegas Script Extender. Uh, if you don't know how to install it, there's a README. It's really easy. Uh, you, you, you have a filter. Uh, you can just type in stuff in there. Let's see if we can type in. Yep, see, type in a word and it finds it. So yeah, this is just this is something that the game should have had all along. So I felt that the UI was one of the most disappointing parts because it really felt like a console UI instead of something that had been designed to maximize the potential of the PC. So this is something that's a lot better and will make your life a hell of a lot easier, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, this is something pretty much everyone playing Skyrim on a PC should have, uh, as I can't imagine anyone who would want to deal with the, the normal UI of the game when you could have this. It's just quite simply worlds apart. Or <laughs> streets ahead, as one might say. Uh, anyways, we now have uh, Andrew. Oh, crap. Oh, I almost attacked the guard there. That would not have been good. Alright, uh, let's go into free camera. i look at Andrew. And this is the Reforged Narsil, so the two of them are going to look similar, but yeah, the, you can see the swords are just quite high resolution textures, uh, they're very good looking. And you can craft whole different versions of them, they have all the, you know, the proper Lord of the Rings runes on them and stuff. Uh, and they're just generally pretty badass. Uh, you need to go somewhere we're not going to attack anybody by accident. It's the game is intended on making difficult for me, it would seem. Be careful. Now we'll look at the one-handed version. I believe there may be plans to make these obtainable through a quest, uh, but for right now you can just get them by f uh, buying it from Eorland or crafting them. So, see, uh, there it is. It's got the little decorations on the hilt there. And now we'll do Narsil. Uh, two handed first. Doesn't have the runes because the runes were added by uh, the elves when they reforged it. So yeah, you can just kind of some of the subtle differences there. You can also, I believe, get the shards of Narsil or forge them, which makes like a dagger type thing. But I don't have that at the moment. And you can see just kind of a simpler design. But still a really cool looking sword because uh, they were very well designed for the movies. So they look pretty awesome in Skyrim. Yeah, that's all the uh, Lord of the Rings swords. Let's just uh, there you go. And it's pretty standard sword animations. And there's one other thing I want to show you of Sky UI, which is the improved trading interface, which is literally there's no comparison. It's amazing. Uh, like look, uh, the way it's set up now is you have everyone's you have the the seller here, and then 
the buyer here, the exchange interface works the same way. Like if you want to exchange something with Lydia, she'll be here. Uh, you'll be there and you just swap inventories back and forth. And it, it's just, it's so much easier to navigate. It's so much nicer. Like I, I can do work and just find all the Orca stuff. This is really just amazing. So again, I can't stress this enough. Everyone should have this mod if you're playing. Like these, this is one of the quality of life mods that just makes the game so, so much better. And with such uh, small change, well, not small changes, but some changes, uh, it's not not any kind of huge sweeping overhaul to game areas, quests, companions, stuff like that. It's just uh, a UI overhaul that it makes such a huge difference. So, really, uh, yeah, everyone should uh, try this mod. It's absolutely shop. fantastic. All right, sorry for the skip there. I had to uh, pause really quick. Anyways, the next mod I have to show you guys is called the Dovakin's Hideout, and it is a uh, a player home that's accessible from any of the uh, normal player homes in the game. It's kind of an addition to them almost, and uh, I'll show you. So we'll go inside the player home here. And so you know, maybe we need to explore some of the other player homes. Because uh, I only have this one. Well, it's nice. And I was kind of curious as to what the other ones are. So you go to every, it adds a little trap door in every, uh, every player house you can go into. I see so you go in right there. And this is basically just a complete player home. It has you know, display cases, tons of bookshelves, which is someone who loves the bookshelves I'm very, uh, very excited about. Uh, you know, all the different shrines in the game, alchemy tables, enchanting tables, and display mannequins. So basically, it's just a really, really cool uh, player home. So you see, it has doors from every home in the game. Uh, incidentally, I'm one, I actually didn't know what that home is. I need to look that up because if Dorbin home it sounds pretty nice. But, anyways, you can also show some of the different stuff. You can use the mannequin room. Uh, these guys you can just put crap on and uh, they'll wear it. Oh, what do I have? I, we'll give them the the fine clothes and the fine hat. And can, okay, I'm not actually sure they'll carry a weapon. Let's give them a weapon. Oh, only armor. I thought so. So, yep, you see, now he's wearing clothes. So you can just store all your weapons, uh, or store all your armor on these guys. Uh, so you have tons of weapon racks. And you can keep, instead of keeping all your stuff in a chest, you can actually keep it out on individual guys and take it as you want, which is uh, pretty cool, actually. It's a better way of doing it, I think, although a bit more time-consuming, but it's more intuitive. You see you have a huge, uh, complete forge in here, complete with, you know, uh, resources, ingots, workbench, pretty much everything you need in chests. And here, yeah, here's the enchanting table, uh, the alchemy table. And just kind of a whole bunch of uh, useful crafting areas in here. So all the crafting you need to do, you can do right from here. These display cases to put stuff in. A little velvet padding, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, you can see another mannequin here. You have the obligatory Jarl throne. Complete with, you know, casual Jarl slouch. So that's nice. Tons more weapon racks. So you have the little uh, shield rack there. You can put your shield on it. Or you can put a weapon on it. We'll put a uh, two-handed andro. See, we can put it on here. Yep. And yeah, so you can kind of hang up your swords there. Now we're going to go down to the other area, which is kind of the living space. That's like the practical stuff, and down here is where you can kind of the more. You know, just role-playing or just goofing around area. So you have your own personal bar. Bedroom. Complete with, you know, random statues, fireplace. Pretty little versions of all the, the legendary people. A nice safe. Cabinet. Very refined bed. Nice plants for colors. It's a very pleasant looking home. I'm sorry, I was already in there. It's my my apologies. And then you have kind of the main hall down here, which is really cool looking. And more benches, tapestries, tons of bookshelves. I think not all of them are fully scripted yet, but even so, this is just this is awesome. Like this, if you like the bookshelves, this is great. You have all the different shrines are here. So if you want a particular shrine, you got it right in here. Don't need to go anywhere. I'm actually not sure what this thing does. I think it's probably... Oh, okay. 
I missed that, I apologize. So there's a dungeon. Oh crap, that might not be finished though. Yeah, I actually missed that segment, I apologize. Just poking around to make sure I hit everything, but yeah, there's a, even a creepy little dungeon. Which looks like it might not be finished yet, which is understandable because this mod is still a work in progress. So uh, I think they've done some really great stuff with this, though. So I look forward to seeing the finished product. Let's go back up. And what I'm actually really uh, hoping somebody does is kind of like what you could do with the Lucky 38. And uh, looks like they just have some kind of stuff about the actual mod here, which is cool. I really have the, the, just the book feature in Elder Scrolls uh, in general is coming as, coming from someone who came from the Fallout games. It's really fantastic, uh, just for lore stuff. But yeah, I'm really hoping someone eventually with something like this just makes a mod where you, obviously you can get you multiple companions, but you can just you know send them all back to a player home like like this in particular and just have them all kind of group around, actually interact with the environment, stuff like that. Because you could have literally your kind of your own mercenary band, you know, just hanging out here, walking around. I was like, you could have your whole group of companions walking around the Lucky 38 eventually, and I think that would actually be really cool. Uh, be very uh, atmospheric, uh, if you will, kind of feature for the game. All right, so we're just gonna exit back out, and then I have, I believe, I want to show you the Riverwood uh, town enhancement graphical overhaul, and then just the uh, kind the other map versions. And that'll be all. So this has been a very long one, uh, which I apologize for, but it's a whole bunch of awesome Skyrim mods, and I think it's, uh, you know, might as well just do a whole bunch, because they're a lot of fun. Alright, so, we'll try and make this snappy. So yeah, the, uh, sexier, uh, villages thing, it's just the same thing as the other ones, uh, just makes them, uh, you know, kind of a bit more vibrant, a bit higher resolution. In the case of the villages, it's just more so that they're higher resolution, uh, necessarily, as opposed to more colorful, I believe, just because uh, there's not as much color you can add to the villages as you can to kind of big halls or palaces or the, 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 the roofs, I can't talk, in Whiterun. Yeah, let's travel real quick. Again, just look at the map. Very cool. So we'll go actually go to Falkreath. Oh, that's where else. We'll go, go to Riverwood first and then Falkreath. So I want to see if we can get another night, but Falkreath is usually foggy. So. If you didn't know, you can spin these just by holding down left left mouse button and moving the mouse around. I figure most people know that by now, but just in case you don't. So yeah, there's a night sky for you. Is that not beautiful? Like auroras, nebulas, it's pretty amazing. And if you don't want all the glowy crap, you what you can you can get a version that's just the the high density star field, like just these really star the stars right here, which is gorgeous in and of itself. But um, if you want the kind of the weirder night sky atmosphere that I believe Marwin had had, don't quote me on that, as I haven't played it, but I've seen people playing it, and I seem to recall that's what it looked like. You can get this, and it really does just look gorgeous. It's very eerie and fantastical and unnatural, which is coincidentally exactly what you're looking for in, in a fantasy game sometimes. So let's just wait till the day so we can look around and actually see the differences. Yeah, you can see everything is just... Uh, you know, the colors are a bit, bit brighter. Uh, Disrespect the law and you disrespect the woods higher definition you know the stones that ivy is more colorful you know add some color to the area and just generally spruces everything up and makes it look uh, a bit prettier and a, a bit more vibrant and again this is less noticeable with the towns or the, the small towns in it is with white run but this will be done for all of the small towns in the game uh, not just uh, white unlike the uh, white run of windhelm ones are just part of the city anything which share these these textures will get this kind of more colorful cheerful overhaul so you can really kind of solidify the high fantasy atmosphere for the whole game just by adding this in so i'm just going to show the uh remaining map mod and then we will be done for today start for the jump there just had to exit the game and re-enter to reset the map but uh there's actually one other mod i forgot to tell you which is actually how i got lydia to wear this in the first place 
you get, uh, it's called Lydia Exchangeable Armor, and what it does is kind of like the compan the armor mods for Companions for New Vegas. Uh, it basically makes it so that her default steel armor, which you normally can't access, becomes something... It becomes a, a normal suit of armor, so you can equip it uh, and de-equip it on her at will, so you can get rid of that and put on, you know, the, the Triss outfit or whatever other white armor crap you want to give her, so she'll use that instead of the, uh, ar the heavy armor, which has a higher rating. So anyways, uh, if this worked... Yep, this is called the Classic Map, and what it aims to do is kind of add on, you know, your your Lord of the Rings style uh, parchment paper, you know, classic book illustration map, which I think looks really awesome. Like, I'm a huge fan of this. This is really freaking cool. And it's still a work in progress, so if you think, you know, it, it looks bad, or, you know, that the textures look weird because all the mountains and stuff are still there, again, it's a work in progress, so this is by no means a finished feature. I just think it's a, it has a whole lot of potential. You know, it's got again, it's very, very Lord of the Rings, with the the names and just really, really cool. So I'm really glad somebody did something like this, uh, as it is pretty awesome. And again, uh, you can get a version of the map without the clouds, which uh, just removes all all the you know, various clouds drifting around and would make the classic map probably look better, although at the moment it's still got all the different terrain and stuff, so... Yeah, and you can see, you can still see all the roads, all that, it's just got the very uh, classic fantasy illustration feel, which is, and again, another just really cool atmosphere bit, and it's a bit really just kind of adds a lot to the game, makes it look really neat. So yeah, uh, that is all I have for you for today. I mean, all I have, it's been like, what, 40 minutes? <laughs> I apologize for that. But anyways, again, this is not going to be a regular feature, this is going to be, uh, Something I'll do every now and then again. Primary focus will most likely still remain on New Vegas. Uh, there's a whole ton of really awesome mods out there already with the creation kit coming. I really encourage you guys to take a look. It's just some really fantastic stuff. And again, the schedule I'm shooting for is Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. More with Sunday being the mod video. Whatever mods I'm doing that week. Uh, whether it be Skyrim, Fallout 3, New Vegas, what have you. Uh, but oh, those will tend to be up later in the night. So uh, if you want to check for new videos, a good time to do that would probably be starting... Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Saturday mornings. I tend to upload later on at night. That's just what I do uh, based on my schedule. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, there's a ton of cool Skyrim mods out there. If you find any you think I should see, uh, you send them to me. I won't be doing a weekly thing, but I'll still be doing them every now and again. So, yeah, this is a Tunator. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.